Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. Um, today I will cover a very interesting topic uh, because it's not the common uh, basic training topic that I usually cover in this channel. It's more like a requirement from a customer um, that needed to know if uh, you can have uh, some special requirements in the security system, some features, so special features in the security system to meet with the uh, CFR 21 part 11 specification uh, from the CFR, uh, sorry, the, the FDA. Uh, so you can have a compliance, compliance application with the FDA regulation. Um, by default, when a customer or when someone wants to, to do that, wants to, to uh, implement a solution based on the on this FDA regulation, the CFR 24, 21 part 11. Um, the easiest way to work around everything is, uh, well, use uh, an Active Directory server linked with uh, Abby Badge. Uh, and that's how it's implemented in the most cases, but there are cases where you won't have an Active Directory server available because you will be running a local HMI, a very small project, but still you need to have the, the HMI application compliance with the FDA regulation. And you need to have some um, additional uh, security uh, features to, 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 to have this um, um, regulation uh, uh, well, apply it to your project or to meet the regulation to, to be compliant with it. So what I created is the, an application that does, does that. Basically, uh, this application that I created covered three points. Um, you, by default, the local security system has some limitations. You cannot configure a user to force uh, force them to set its own password the first time that the user access to the system. That's the first limitation. The second limitation is you, you cannot mark a user to force them to change their password the next time that this user access to the system. So it's different than the first, the first one um, because the first one is when you create a password, a new user. So it's an, a, a, a new user created and you set a temporary password for this user and you need the user to set its own password, their own password the next time that they access to the system. So that's the first, uh, the first point. The second point is when the user already exists, but you need to, to, put, to, to make the, the user to change its, uh, their password the next time that they access to the system. And this third tier option, uh, tier limitation, sorry, is that we don't have restrictions about uh, the passwords that uh, should be used uh, at changing a password. So in several installations, so for the FDA regulation, you need to have a, a specific number of latest used passwords that cannot be used as a new password. So the system should, should check if a password was used previously. If, if, if not, then it proceeds to change the password. If so, well, uh, if the password was used previously, well, the system should not allow changing the password. So these are the three limitations that by default the security system has. But uh, you can work around all this by scripting. So what I did here is, let me close this, close this is I created four scripts. I will open this. Probably you can pause the video and check what's going on here. And, um, these are the scripts. I created these scripts and some screens here to uh, simulate the security, the, the security system having these uh, features available uh, by scripting, basically. So what it does is that um, we encrypt everything. We encrypt uh, all the users, passwords, etc., and put that information inside the file and in the projects and the projects uh, folder. 
and that file is used as a, as a like a database. So you can access to the file, but you won't be you won't be able to see what is inside because it's encrypted. Uh, the encrypt, encry, encryption key is stored here in the startup script. I said it. Uh, I said a password to the startup script, so it's <laughs> you cannot access to the. Or no, nobody with with even with access to the development environment can access to the encryption password. Uh, only one people, two people. Well, you can decide who has access to the to the encryption password. By, by, but by default, it's suggested that you should not share the encryption password. Otherwise, you will be able to decrypt what's inside the database. So let me show you what's happening here. We have, um, no, sorry. We have, uh, I think I delete the user that's currently, yeah. I delete the user that's currently logged on. So username, I need to log off here. And log on, log off. And now the user is guest, so I can start. So I reset everything to be, uh, to start from the beginning. Let me show you that. This is my pre folder. I have nothing here. You can see I have the standard uh, pre, uh, pre uh, folders uh, uh, in the in the pre folder. I have the standard well the pre uh, subfolders here. And what I will do is I will create a new user. So I will add a new user. The username will be um, user A. The password will be one two three. All right, let's make it simple. I will use a password A. By the way, you can create also a, a rule in the security system. This is easier. You can create a rule to have a minimum number of characters. You can have a special characters, a minimum number of special characters, etc. You can define the complexity of the password. But for this specific situation, because I'm not showing that uh, feature on the product, I'm showing just what you can do with, with scripting, I will use a simple password, which is A. Okay, so A is the password for user A. And what I will do is I will log on as user A. So user A and password A. And the first time that I log on, it will open the change of password A. Uh, a dialog here and if you see here I cannot do anything else in the in the graphics interface if I have this window open so this window looks what looks what looks what I have behind it so I cannot operate without a uh, passing this uh, dialog I can choose to cancel and after canceling you you will see that the user is logged off so the next time that the user tries to log on, log on into the system. So user A with password A, you will you will get the same uh, you will get the same uh, dialog. So this dialog will appear until you change your password. So uh, I can do it one more time. I'm logged off. So let's try again. User A password A, and I have the same window here. So what I can do is um, I can uh, set a new password for it. So let's set the password. Uh, password, uh, new password will be um, B and the old password was A. So let's accept the changes. And the next time that I log on with, I can log off, of course, guest. I can log on again with user A and password B. And after that, it won't ask for the password anymore because I already changed my password. But what happens uh, if I want to change my own password? So I want to force, I want to change my own password. So my, I want to use uh, password A, my current password is B. And if I do that, I get this error saying the specified password was used previously, please use a different password. 
And that's because the implementation that I did uh, basically checks the last uh, three used passwords. And if you use this, the password that was used previously, then it won't allow you to change the password. So error change the password, you can cancel it. Uh, you can try again, maybe log on. Uh, here, user A, password B. Change the current user password. I can use another password, maybe B. Uh, the password is B. I don't want to change my password, but the system asks me to change the password, so I will do that. No, I cannot do that neither because, well, the password that I specified is still a uh, previously used password. It is the list of three last user passwords. So what I can do is I can set a new password C and the old password will be B. And after that, the system will allow to change the password. So if I log off, I look in again, user A, the password is C, then I can log on as user A. And all this is being managed, is being processed by all these scripts. Of course, all this can be enhanced, can be polished to be better, to be maybe more secure. But I want to show you what's happening behind everything. So to make this work, what I'm using is this file. I, I call it the security DB. Okay. So if I open this file, what I have inside is encrypted data. Encrypted data for the user, for the passwords. So I need the encryption key to be able to determine the username, determine the passwords used. So this makes complex to anyone to be able to determine what was the password, for what user corresponds each password, etc. Right now, we know that we have user A in the system so the user here is user A. We know that we uh, use it uh, A and B and C as password. So here we have encrypted A, B, and C. But let me show you one more time. If I change a password. So let's change the current user password. The current password is C. I will use, sorry, the new password will be D. The current password is C. So check what happens. The file is updated and a password change is there for the same user. But it's encrypted. Of course, you can change it by another thing. By a very big password, it's, it's on you. But that's basically how it works. Um, and it will always remember the three last used passwords. So one other thing, you can create a new user. You can create an unlimited number of users. So the uh, new username, it might be uh, user B. The password will be um, B or BB, double B, accept the password. Here, if we reload, it will show you that we have an user there and we have a, a single password for it. We didn't uh, add any new password yet. So I will log on as user B with password B and since, sorry, it's BB. And since it's a new, pa a new user, it will ask me to change the password for this user. So uh, the new password will be CC and the old password is BB. So, okay. And if we check here, we have a second password added, added to the file. We can change the password one more time for user B. So it was the new password will be DD and the old password is CC. And you can see here, we have the true password. Of course, this is a very evident 
very very evident uh, way to do things. Uh, the format for the security DB file is evident, but you can make it sec more secure if you want. Um, it's on you. Um, you can maybe obfuscate it a little bit more. This is just uh, a demonstration, but that's how it works. So what I, I filled my three password fields. I can add more. Yeah, I can put P4, P, et cetera, to have more passwords available depending on your project requirements. It's just changing a couple more lines in the in the scripts, but that's it. That's how, how it works. Uh, well, uh, if I want to change my password one more time, let's say DD, uh, EE. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. It's new password is DD. I'm oh, sorry, EE. And the old password was DD. So ch check what will change. It will change the first password, the older, oldest password. And the next one, it will change this password. And next time it would change this password. And next time it would change this password and so on. Uh, clever, right? Looks great. So what happens if I have a user A? I want user A to change the pa it's a password the next time that it log on. So uh, I want to force a user to change this password. So I have the list of users here. I have user A, user B. I can even create a new user. User C with password CC and uh, it will be here also. So user C and I will force user B, user A, to change it, its password the next time that the user access to the system. So let's click on accept and it will well the confirmation message. Are you sure that you want to have a system? Yeah, I want to do that. That's why I'm here on this screen. So let's just say yes. Okay, I want that. So the next time that user A access to the system where the password was uh, E, I believe, D, yeah, D, password was D. So it will say, okay, change the password because you're not allowed to access to the system without changing your password. You're forced to change your password. I know I don't want to do that. Uh, well, man, you, if you want to access to the system, you need to change your password. So, okay, well, I would change the password to E, my old password was D, so let's change that. Uh, well, as you can see, the, the password here is also uh, change it. Of course, disappear because I added a new user, but um, the password for user A obviously was here. But if you access to the system without knowing the order of the users that were created, you will know who what, what properties are for user A or for user B, for any user in general, you will know that. So um, you can encrypt everything, including these uh, numbers here can be encrypted also. Uh, so it can be more uh, secure if you want. But basically that's it, that's how it works. Um, this application uh, is not available officially in the Abiba website. Um, so if you need the application, I can send, we can send it to you. Just contact the technical support department for Abiba uh, at this email address is edge.support at abiba.com. And the technical support team will be able to share this demo project with you if you are interested interested on this uh, application. Again, the application is very basic. I tried to make it basic, um, but you can make it more complex or add add it more add more features to it to make it more secure or to do more things, even even more things if you need that to uh, be compliant compliant with the FDA regulations if you if that's your objective. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you have any questions, any comments, please leave that in the comment section below. Take care.